The Super Bowl is officially over. The Pats are once again crowned NFL champs, and we are back with another episode of the D Gentleman Show. Uh, guys, this episode, we're going to recap the big game. We're going to go basketball heavy, and we're also going to learn how to cook a steak. But uh, let me introduce the panel first. Of course, we got the man with the plan, the guy who makes the lines for all the MGM properties, and here at the Man at Mandalay Bay, Jay Rude. How's it going, guys? Good to be back. Good to see you. Sorry I had to miss last week in the lead up to the big show, but um, I think Lamar stepped in and gave you the most valuable play of the Super Bowl, bet the under. Yeah, absolutely. No matter what you do, bet the under in the Super Bowl every year, and you should come out a winner in the long run. Was it, what about, the, not the Atlanta, well, we'll get into that. We got Alex Money. In the long run. We got Alex Money Monaco, who actually made money, actually hit. For the first time. Finally. Yeah. 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 Valentine's Day day back on, baby. We'll get into uh, that. I don't later. know about that. 118 bets since uh, Super Bowl. That could oh, be a problem. Oh, my roll. Again, I got relatives watching. Uh. This is, this is. And also, we have a special guest here in studio, former Saturday Night Live alumni, uh, you've seen him on MTV's Guy Code, and you can also catch him at the Comedy Cellar at the yeah. Rio. Yeah. My good friend, Mr. Dean Edwards, is here. Yeah, man. A.K.A. Curtis Blow, and I want you to know that these are the brands. Check it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, baby. And finally, we got someone that's funny on this panel. <laughs> oh, 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 Jay's taking shots shot. already. We just oh, got you here. get. Uh, All right. What's the over-under on laughs today? Huh? Yeah. No, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I still think the, the NFL Hall of Fame jacket it was a very funny joke. Yeah, Thank right. You. Thank yeah, you, Jay. I thought that yeah. was a brilliant we'll joke. We'll never see that joke. We'll never see that joke. <laughs> first first prop of jacket. the show. First prop of the show. <laughs> He's a prop comic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, Carrot Top and I go way back. Uh, like Spinal Cords and eight tracks <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm sure you uh, watched the big game with the exception of Dean. I you, took a knee. He took a knee. You didn't really care about that. Uh, I, I did. Football's not your sport. Basketball's your sport. Basketball's my sport. We're going to come in basketball heavy at the end. But okay. for all of you that watch this game, as a football fan, I really enjoyed it. I love watching a defensive performance uh, as, a, as a football purist. Well, but you heard that from anybody that knows the game. It's, it was an enjoyable game for people that know it well. For, for a casual fan, 13-3 is a little, little snooze fest-esque. But I enjoyed it. Um, two uh, questions, though. Go ahead. What are we going to say? For somebody that was heavily invested in the game, um, it was not enjoyable because <laughs> I needed the Rams to win or we needed the Patriots to win by one or two, which was lightning in a bottle, which it kept looking like it might happen. I kept playing these scenarios out. All right, I need two more field goals here and a touchdown, and we're a two-point win. Or we get the safety, which normally I'm not rooting for a safety, but we get the safety, and that puts us in a spot to be in a two-point range. So... Uh, it was it was a rather frustrating game to watch from a bookmaking standpoint. Did, did, the, did the line ever go up to three or no? It just stayed at two. Uh, and a half, some places went to three, but we were at two and a half you guys, all the way through. Okay. Um, how did Vegas? How, so you guys, I mean, how, how did Vegas fare with this? With uh, this no, Nevada did well, and I think basically what Nevada what happened was uh, going into the Super Bowl, you're on a position where we book who's going to win the Super Bowl all year, and you have a certain amount of revenue locked up to that going into the Super Bowl. Like on both teams, we we did well. We were going to win whichever team won the Super Bowl out of these two. We were going to have a certain amount of revenue. We basically locked that up in a very small return on the game itself. So that was kind of what, what you saw. You know, the state won $10 million, uh, on a $145 million handle. That's it? Yeah, very small. That's it? does it? seem small. Yeah. yeah like I, was I mean, it's a, it's a good win for the state, traditionally. I mean, uh, it's, a, it's, you know, the only one of the, the first legalized betting markets there is. You know, $145 million, that's... You know, decent decent hold on that. It's roughly you know seven eight percent. Is that average? Like in, the average take over the last ten years? Uh, no, one forty five is probably average for the last five years. Okay. One hundred forty five million booked to the state. Um, New Jersey did thirty five million, which I was expecting more, because just their proximity to you know. Mm, I'm gonna tell you city. why. I'm gonna tell and, you and why. And Mississippi was very small. I think they all protested the game down there, uh, and didn't really bet it because of the Saints. No, I'll tell you, I'll tell you why New Jersey didn't pull the numbers you thought they would. And John, you can vouch for me on this. These guys have their own bookies and they've been doing it their own way for, right? Mm, Dean, yeah, you're a New yeah, Yorker. Yeah. For probably- They go with who they know. You go, <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. they right. got a guy. I know Jimmy, I got a guy. Yeah, no, but nobody's gonna wanna go, you know, claim this money at, through, through a casino. I, I guarantee you 90% of guys that would bet right, I, we've, we're going we've, the traditional route. We've right. told all the uh, regulators that that's our biggest competition, right? It's, uh, my competition isn't FanDuel or DraftKings or William Hill, 
it's, you know, Vinny Boombots down at the bar booking Henry the bets. Hill. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Henry Hill, right. <laughs> and offshore, you know, Bow Dog, all these guys, you know, that's the ones we got to be able to erode into their, some of their market share. Do you, uh -huh. which do you it's going to take years to do that. Jay, do you typically see the public and the wise guys agree? That's what we saw this past weekend, right? Um, yes and no. I mean, it's pros versus Joes is what you call that. Sometimes the pros and Joes are on the same time, but generally they're opposite. Um, in this game, they were opposite, obviously, the total. The, the Joes go over, the pros were going under. Um, and what we happened here, I think the reason we didn't get the big numbers we thought we were going to get in Nevada is because the Rams fan base is paper thin, right? I mean, yeah, they're from L.A. years ago, but, you know, the move and the back and forth, their fan base is kind of diluted, right? So we, don't really, we didn't really have the fan base that we thought we would coming to Vegas to bet them. I thought I was going to see a lot more Ram money show up on the weekend. And it didn't. It just kept coming Patriots. Yeah, but, and Patriots. I took I took a million dollar bet on the Patriots 45 minutes before kickoff. Wow. Really? Yeah. I mean, so it was Patriot money well, was coming Jay, hard. But, uh, but does it to, to gamblers, to me at least, it doesn't matter if my team's in the Super Bowl or not. Like I don't need to be a Rams fan to bet on the Rams. No, but it does obviously it does drive I'm not it. a Rams fan and I bet on the Rams. When you when, <laughs> but when, when you're when you're talking like eight, ten percent, you know, like incremental growth, mm -hmm. that, that it the matchup does help. And a lot of people are saying that, you know, they have Patriot fatigue, which, I mean, if you keep getting to the goddamn cashier's window, it's, how, how can you have fatigue from that, you know? Yeah, I, I don't so, care. I mean, yeah. I, I, John, you brought up something, though, uh, uh, which I thought was interesting, that the East Coast casinos got killed and West Coast fared better, right? Yeah. yeah. Be because of the Patriot fatigue. They, they just, they, they bet local, you know, they, they take the local team. Yeah, but, much more of a regional bias. Okay. Yeah. And you guys, MGM has a, has a, has a Boston... We uh, Borgata in Atlantic City, Borgata. and we did see we did see a lot of uh, a lot of Patriot money there, but we did really well to props there. So that's what carried the day. Props carried the day for, for most of the companies. What, Speaking of props, yeah, yeah. Was there a prop of no quarterbacks throwing a touchdown? Yeah, uh, you could have. No yeah, quarterbacks you, threw a touchdown. Yeah, you could have said uh, that there was a prop of z uh, zero uh, passing touchdowns by either quarterback, not total together. Yep, and but we had. Uh, I think it was like 45 to 1 probably on both of them. 45 to 1? 45 to 1 on zero touchdown passes by I, either quarterback. I, I, I honestly... And no touchdown scored in the game was the biggest sweat we had. I, you know, I that was personally coming in late. thought it... I, I did take the under, right? But I thought that at least, you know, there would be some type of a shootout. I knew the defense would come to play, right? Which I called. But I had no idea Goff was going to be shook like that. And I had no idea. Brady would not throw for a touchdown in a Super Bowl? That's insane. Well, let me ask you, Brett. When you're watching, I kept thinking the, it was going to break out. It was favoring the Rams. Yeah, the I was close, waiting for something The chess to match. And then McVay, he never pulled out his bag of tricks. No. There was no, there was no, there was no trick play. There was nothing sexy on offense for the Rams. No, I, I agree, man. The problem was is when you're inside your 15 all day long, you know, that's where these guys were kept, kept getting pinned with these punts. And you're, it's, it's risky to do something goofy down there. But how do you not know there? that Belichick's coming out with six down linemen? If they came out with a 6-1, I listened to Cosell break down the tape. That's obviously not a normal formation, and they didn't do anything to debunk it all game. Well, again, uh, Goff, he, he, I, he played shook, man. I mean, and Paul Verzi called it, by the way. Shout out to Paul. He okay. called it. Um, Goff was missing receivers, throwing bad. I mean, and then again, I mean, they, they barely used... Um, Girly, uh, girly yeah. you know what I mean? I, mean? I don't know if he was hurt or not. I think it was. He was making some big plays, but still. Ten carries for your MVP. Yeah. yeah. For the best running back in the NFL. I, exactly. I mean, you could make arguments for some other guys. You mean like he, Ezekiel Elliott? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I get you, I get you. The, the, the guy is arguably or, or the top three running backs in the NFL. I mean, okay? and, and he uh, got ten carries in the Super Bowl. I'd put him five, but that's okay. Yeah. 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 Of, all, of all the Patriots <laughs> Super Bowl, I mean, that was the one that was the most ripest for the Patriots to lose. I mean, they didn't do Absolutely. anything spectacular to, to win that game, you know, except any for... Any props, Jay? Any, any big props other than the ones you talked about? You know, like... Well, yeah, I mean, zero touchdowns scored in the game. We were sweating that late because that was a, you know, we had an index of who will score the first touchdown, and no touchdown score was 250 to 1. And then we have an ind another index that says who will score the last touchdown, and it's also 250 to 1. So we had, like, well over $600,000 in liability for a touchdown. So once they scored that touchdown... You know, we were good. Oh, that's um, a swag. Yeah. Also, first touchdown scored, which is a prop bet, uh, a well-known. Was in a fourth yeah. quarter. Doesn't come till the fourth quarter. Right, right. What about uh, what about uh, you were talking to me about a, somebody had like uh, three points on? Oh yes. Yeah, oh yeah. Bet the, bet the Rams. You was talking about right? Yeah, I mean three points. Traditionally, as a bookmaker, we sweat the over. Right. We never yeah. want to see a game with a bunch of points. All that. 
I'll take that sweat any day over sweating all these low numbers because to score exactly three points, it was 250 to one. We had a guy bet a nickel on that, one over 100,000. Wow. Um, you know, the, uh, the other one, which we needed the field goal, uh, if we would have gotten them to do six, it would have cut that in half by far. But getting out of the 14, the two to 14 range scored in the whole game, that was another 175 to one prop. So once they got to 16, we had dodged another bullet there. I mean, we were looking at like some, like if a safety would have been scored and it would have been um, exactly two points for the Rams only, it, it, it would have been like, we're talking $2 million we would have lost on that prop. Because it's like 10,000 to one. <laughs> who bets a nickel? <laughs> I, I, yeah. I, it's like, who goes in like, hey, I got a good feeling about this. <laughs> and and you're for nothing. You're rooting for nothing. Right. Right, right. Lack of human achievement. Right. It's, not a real, it's not a real nickel, no. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's not a shame. I'm going to take my Apple money. <laughs> but speaking of greatest NFL dynasties. Oh, well, this is what I was going to segue to that, but thank you. Uh, so now, with, with this victory... Does this cement the Patriots as the greatest NFL dynasty ever? And, and, and I mean, we, we, it's definitely the most decorated. We well, going by order of Social Security again? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, for, for me, it's, I mean, I, I hate to say it, and I'm probably one of the biggest Pat haters out there just because, you know, I, it costs me money, <laughs> like every time they win, almost. But, yeah, you know. I mean, Not more than John. It's, it's, <laughs> it's Pats and everybody else at this point. Yeah, unfortunately. Now, again, I, I say as a franchise, I mean, well, first of all, just to be alive to see this happen, you got to be. And, and, and again, all the teams I'm about to mention, I don't like. Okay, <laughs> I actually hate more than the Pats. <laughs> right. I'm very, and you said this earlier that it's yeah, something you, special. You, you have to, even, oh, even for, for uh, uh, a born New Yorker, that it's just, it's in your DNA not to like New England anything, whether Boston Celtics, whether New England Patriots. You have to give credit to uh, Tom Brady and, and, and Belichick for what they've done with that team. And I, and I for one, because because the numbers don't lie, like, you know, people can say, well, deflate gate. People can say, well, you know, they're, they're, uh, the people speculate, you know, what, whether he's a cheater. My wife always is saying, well, he's a cheater. I'm like, yeah, but he got it six times. Right. You went it six times. You have to but you I, have to give some yeah, at least value. Yeah, I think time. there's got to be a, a nod of the cap to ownership, too. I mean, he, yeah. he, he, he does what... You know, my, a, lot, my, a lot of owners can't do, and that's my not going to, to screw it up. My nod right, is to right. Belichick to, to watch yeah. that, and I know John's about to throw something at me. <laughs> uh, if this doesn't cement the fact that he's the greatest coach in NFL history, the way even the way he was able to manipulate McVay and, and just disguise his coverages, it, it, I mean, but saying this, I believe what the, the Patriots are probably, I don't know if they're a dynasty because they're not one team. Yeah, I would, I would still lean I mean, Pittsburgh, right? Don't you want to lean Pittsburgh just well, because you, they... you took the words out of my mouth because you knew I was going to go there. I didn't know you were going to no, go there. I was going to say... I thought you were going to be a homer and choose listen, the Cowboys. If I was going to say... Right. The, the, if the greatest NFL dynasty or franchise of all time, in my opinion, out of all of the dynasties between the Niners, the Steelers, the Cowboys, and the Pats... I would give it to the Steelers overall. And I hate the Steelers. I hate the Steelers more than the Pats. Because of a cohesive unit. Well, they won in they won in uh, the twenty first uh, in, in the twenty first century. They won in the seventies. Uh, they have teams that you could put up against other teams, and you could say, okay, that seventies, what that four Super Bowl victories in the seventies accomplished. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, overall the franchise in itself, from top to bottom. Just three there, coaches. Yeah, and there, yeah, there's no shady yeah. stuff around it. There's no, you know. Um, uh, was a big deal. Um, that was massive for, for, for the NFL, I think. I think. But, but also, they are currently the most dysfunctional team in the NFL currently. At currently, absolutely. Yeah, currently. Absolutely. But I meant that's going to happen. We're not, we're, I'm saying overall, the question is this. Do you think the Pats could go to nine Super Bowls in the 90s and, and 80s? There's no way. This was the perfect storm. We've talked about this. Mm, I think they could. Really? There's With no what way. team? There's no way. With what team? Yeah, like, yeah, with which team? This team that just won? You think that team is going to beat the New York Giants? That, that, LT and Harry Carson and I think, I think I think the scheming, yeah. I mean, he's taking it to a whole new level. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, well, a lot, lot of times. Because Belichick was the defensive 
defensive coordinator. <laughs> right, listen, guys, are we gonna are we gonna have this debate? Are we gonna keep going with facts here? A lot of this is hypothetical. Right, right. We gotta do with the. I know he was a defense. He also went 11 and five with the Browns, and who knows if he was coaching, he could have built a dynasty. I'm saying, this Pat's team. Which Pat's team are you gonna put up against it? All right, let's let's scratch that. What Pat's team do you think could beat Troy Aikman, Michael Irvin, Emmett Smith, Jay Novacek, Charles Haley, Leon Lett? I'm, uh, I'm saying which that offensive line, which, which team, Pat's team, could beat them? And I would say, unfortunately, it's the one that went 17-0 yeah. and yeah. didn't win a Super Bowl. Right. I'm with you. It's probably that one. 07. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, so you say, you say the Steelers, Jay, you say, you say the Pats Patriots. begrudgingly, and I agree with you. Uh, I'm going to go Steelers. 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 But I, I'm just curious, wh- because they have the most accomplishments doesn't necessarily mean it's the best team. No, you we're, know? we're not saying team. We're or saying franchise. dynasty. 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 Yeah. I think their franchises, I mean, like I said, you've got the owner, you've got the coach, and you have a, a, you know, a, the core of the quarterback, I mean, which is the guy that has been there for the whole time. All right. Well, it's not every day as a half-tribesman, fellow Jew, I'm able to endorse Another Jew on the grandest stage, Julian Edelman, 10 receptions, 141 yards, and the Super Bowl MVP. So with that being said, gentlemen, with a Jew winning it all, (laughs) please give us this very short list, figuratively and literally, of the top five Jewish athletes of all time. And you better have Edelman in it, baby. First of all, congratulations. Congrats to to, to the tribe. Thank you. Good every day. Congratulations. This means a lot. I'm not cutting their hair for the rest of the season. Mazel tov is right. No, um, I thought it was, I mean, you you know, I was very happy for you. I I felt it. (laughs) Uh, I I mean, I did. I felt it. He was all excited. Edelman's going to win. He's unbelievable. (laughs) Has this ever happened? It definitely hasn't happened in the 21st century. No. No. Definitely not, unless you're including the movie The Little Giants, but, you know. But that was 20th century. Yes. Yeah, Still. Right. That was 90s. Right. Yeah, well, my lifetime. What's your question, Noel? Yeah, my what? question is, I want to hear from you guys, top five Jewish athletes of all time, if, if you can go that deep into your Rolodex. All right. Uh, I'm, uh, obviously, we're going to go Sandy Koufax is number one. Absolutely. Mm. Right? Mm. And uh, I think that's it, guys. <laughs> <laughs> that's our list. All right. Uh, another episode. <laughs> <laughs> another episode of the, of the D Gentleman Show. Um, who else you got? You? I, I, I mean, I'm Mark Spitz. Mark Spitz is definitely yeah, on. Yeah, Mark Spitz on is there. on the list. Um, and then you got to give a, you know, a female. Well, okay. Sue Bird. Sue Bird. We don't have to give a female. You're, you're <laughs> no, 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 that no. is the top five a- Jewish athlete of all time. And and uh, Goldberg from WWE. Yeah, Bill Goldberg is a Bill Goldberg. Goldberg. Okay. I thought you meant the goalie from the Mighty Ducks. Hell, he- no, <laughs> hell of an athlete. What were you going to say? I was going to say, do we get an honor? What about Amari Stoudemire? Because he converted? Great question. Well, we could use the height. I'll tell okay, you that we, we could use the we height. We give you that. Yeah. And, and you can use the... Uh, no. Use, use, <laughs> use, a lot of use it all. We can use it all. We can use it all. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't count. No, yeah, no, top three. no, no conversion. Who else is top three? I'm just, I think Koufax, Edelman, I think Sid Luckman or Hank Greenberg S- gets in there. Sid Luckman absolutely gets in there. Um, you know, Euclid, I th- you know. What about, uh, what was his name, Max? Lyle Alzado. Ah, yeah. right. his, mom, his mom's right. uh, Jewish. That's a good one. There you go. Uh, okay. Yeah, he's Italian. An- Jewish, another like, PED like user as well, like oh. Edelman. <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> Listen, I got Edelman number two. I got Edelman number two. I got Koufax one. Edelman two. And then I got Brandon Frazier from School Ties. Boom. <laughs> At number three. Boom. <laughs> That's phenomenal. What about Max, uh, what was it, Max Bear, the boxer, right? Uh, yeah. the famous Jewish heavyweight. Yeah. How about how about Jake Berman from the Little Giants, who successfully ran the annexation of Puerto Rico? That's a strong the annexation take down of Puerto Rico. The you, dad from Modern Family. Is that a movie? <laughs> yeah. Do you know why? This is the truth. Do you know why but, uh, Jewish boxers they at one time dominated the sport, but then they ended up losing a lot? Is because uh, they figured out a way to beat them. Just tell me you have a cold. I don't. I'm okay. I don't want to fight. I don't want. I don't want to get sick. Take a fist bump. (laughs) (laughs) That's our five. That's that's, that was. It was a short segment. (laughs) (laughs) But I enjoyed it. Thank you for fulfilling my my moment. Yes. Uh, Honorable mention for me is Gabe Kapler, the manager of the current Philadelphia Phillies. Of course. 
uh, I think 12 years in Major League Baseball, won a ring with the uh, <clears throat> Red Sox. There you go. Uh, but uh, big Cap. shout out to him. Big shout out to Cap. Yeah, more Boston success. Yes. No, uh, I, I, I did, we did say Sid Luckman. We did say yes. Sid, Sid Luckman and Mark Spitz. All right, so just in conclusion, we're all in agreement, our top five Jewish athletes of all time. Koufax won. No, number one San, uh, is Sandy Koufax. Okay. We go in Julian Edelman, too? Absolutely. Edelman. Julian Edelman, in honor of the six-time Super Bowl champions, New England Patriots, yes. Okay. Go ahead. Luckman, Sid Luckman's making the list. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, Sid I'm Luckman. Spitz. Yeah, you, Dean, Spitz. Dean, you cool with you cool with Amari cool Stoudemire? With of course, no. of course. You know, Jews don't convert, but you know, we're no, all out. no conversions, no. especially six foot nine African Americans. <laughs> <laughs> we right. need this. That doesn't count. I like we're, a real, we're a real basketball team with him on this. Number four is Mark. It's an organic list. All right, huh. we're going. Okay, four is Mark Spitz. Right. Okay. And then are we doing Hank Greenberg? I like Bill Goldberg. You got Goldberg, you got Euclid, Sean Green, Ryan Braun. If we're, we're going to make this list legit, it's got to be Hank. Okay. Hank Green. No? Yeah, yeah, Barney Ross, too. Don't forget I mean, Brendan Hank Fraser Green. was pretty strong, though. <laughs> <laughs> so there's our list. Read it off. Top five. All right. Top five Jewish athletes of all time. It's an honor and a pleasure. Sandy Koufax, Julian Edelman, Sid Luckman, Mark Spitz, and Hank Greenberg. So we're, we're gonna allow you now to segue into our, our, our little segment. And today on our how-to segment, Brett and I went to the Oriole here at the Mandalay Bay, where we sat down with Chef Alex and learned how to cook a steak, as well as Harley, the sommelier. So let's take a look. Hey guys, we are here at the Oriole restaurant and we are with Chef Alex, and Chef Alex Hello. is gonna teach us the proper way to cook a steak. The first step is to have a steak room temperature. So before you cook it, it needs to be put out of your uh, fridge mm -hmm. for about 30 to 45 minutes. It's gonna cook faster, it's gonna cook uh, better inside. Now like when this. shopping for meat, is there something that you look for specifically for, to tell what's a good piece of meat, like a good steak? The, 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 the best thing when you look at the meat is the marbling. That's why my favorite cut of meat is the ribeye, because it's fatty, and that's where the flavor is. Now do you, do you uh, marinate Do you marinate it? No, just dry rub it, or just, what do you put on the steak? Salt, pepper. That's it, huh? That's it. Wow. Because you need, you want to, I'm already I mean, that's, that's, that's me. After uh, people, they like, I know in America, you like to put the rub, you like to put some spice. But I just want to taste the steak. That's all I want to taste. I don't want to taste spices. So you season. Olive oil. Olive oil. It's just for the grill. If you grill it, it you avoid the steak to stick to the, so it's going to be easier to move it. We season on the first side, and then you flip it. Do it again. That's a beautiful piece of meat right there, man. Beautiful. So now, when you have everything on it, we're gonna grill it. It gives a little char on the on the meat, and it's that's what you want for the flavor of the meat. How long do you keep it on the on the grill? One minute each uh, side. You purposely uh, grill or mark a meat very well mm -hmm. because you want to caramelize the protein of the meat. If you don't do it, if you just throw it like this in the oven, it's gonna get boiled and there will no flavor. Is this you want you want the you want the the, the grill. What's the, your heat? Is it on high? Oh yeah. So now, you flip it like this to have the diamond. When you do it, you have to do it right the first, because that's going to be your presentation. Uh, uh, When's the minute mark for that flip? How many minutes? Well, 45 uh, seconds, 45, right? 45, 45, one okay. 45 seconds. So the, the heat... Tell you, it depends. If you want it super sharp, you can like go ahead like two or three minutes. So now... Oh, that's beautiful. Look at that. Woohoo! Uh, Look at that. What is the perfect temperature for a steak? I know some people like it well done, some people for like me, it rare. it's medium rare. So it's just what people, what is recommended? I prefer it medium, medium rare. rare, Me, to, rare you have to, to have blood. Rare. Yeah, absolutely. The blood is so important. You give the juice, because if you don't have juice, it's dry, it doesn't have any flavor. So for me, it's medium rare. So now, now is this steak cooked? Is there another step? No, this is rare. This rare. is rare. Blue, even blue. Okay. Because uh, you leave it out for a while. So if you like it blue and you leave it out long enough, it's perfect. So how can you tell the temperature of the steak? So there's this trick that we learn. It's you get your finger, you close the thumb with the index. So that's uh -huh. MR, medium, 
well done. I don't oh, know if wow. you've seen so it. It's just, po it's just poking the meat. Yeah, just, you know, like you can tell, like, you know, like if you close this, it's very hard. Mm -hmm. So when you touch the meat, the like right now you touch the meat, it's very loose, right? Oh, it's rare. It's very loose, so it's rare. Hey, Alex, see that? <laughs> so, Thanks, man. <laughs> Malcolm in the middle. Yeah, you used to do that when I was 12. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna cook it about five, seven minutes to have a good amount. What's the temperature of the oven? Oh, now it's like 600. I'm salivating. I can't wait to eat. <laughs> he is excited. I'm, I'm fired up. As we're sitting here waiting for our steak, we're gonna try and figure out what is the right wine to eat. I guess the pear, is that the word? Pear, yeah. We're both not sophisticated, so we need help. But what would be the best wine to pair with our ribeye? Right. Evening, gentlemen. How are you tonight? How you doing? Good. Very good. Thank you. So thank you for joining us here at Oriel. I'm Harley, the uh, sommelier, taking care of you tonight for wine. So uh, I understand you're having a great steak tonight. Yeah, well, so, uh, what, are, what are you thinking? What would you like to drink with What that? works best with a ribeye? Ribeye? That's what we need help with, to be honest with you. I've, I only grew up with the guy's face on the jar, right. on the bottle. Not the yeah. good stuff. Maybe a shot of tequila. Yeah. I slapped the bag. And, yeah. No. And we usually have beer. So, so. Yeah, which, you no, know, that's that's not bad, but you're in the, the restaurant with the largest wine selection in Las Vegas right now. So I think I, I can find a nice bottle of wine for you to go with that. I've got something unique here at Oriel as well. Uh, we have wine angels that go get the wine. So I'm going to get Soraya to, uh, to go get the bottle for you, and I'll be right back. Okay, so gentlemen, what I selected is 2014 Frank Family Vineyards Cabernet Sauvignon from Napa Valley. Thank you, Harley. Hey, thanks, buddy. Salute. Great choice. Hey, wow. voila, gentlemen. Wow. Thank you, Alex. So, you're welcome. What is that? 24. Mean? So this is the Béarnais. 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 It's uh, like a Hollandaise, but with uh, Charlotte and Tarragon. It's, it's very good. So let me give you some. So you can tell that uh, this is the I like fat, it very rare. the fat, the like fat. Rare. Look at that. That, that, that. Oh, look at that. I bet the producers wish they could have some of this, huh? Uh, I'll tell you what, we'll save the bone for uh, John. Bon appétit, bien sûr. Thank, Thank you, you very sir. much. Appreciate it, sir. Dude, this cutlery is unbelievable. I, last time I was at your place, we had to use a butter knife to cut, cut the You know meat. what? That we ordered. I'm getting better at my picks and, you know, I'll invest in better silverware. Mmm. This is, I'm not even joking. This is ridiculous. Unbelievable. We want to thank everybody here at Oreo and at Mandalay Bay. This is one of the best meals I've ever had. Thank you, Chef Alex, for cooking this steak. Harley, the sommelier, for, for pairing the wine. This is unbelievable. I, I, really, this is the best meal I've had in a long time. Is there really such a thing as a wine angel? Alex, if you believe, anything is possible. So big shout out to Chef Alex. Uh, we actually ate two steaks. Phenomenal. Fantastic. Not for nothing, uh, I forgot to tell you, I actually used the technique over the weekend for Super Bowl weekend. I did the 10 and two, threw it in the oven, 400. It was phenomenal. Um, the wine Angel thing is a nice touch too. Shout out to her. Risking her life for a bottle of wine. You gotta us. be an athlete, like rock climbing. <laughs> lay yourself up. Pretty cool. Belay. Yeah, that's what I said. Solid. Yeah. Alex. And Harley, our Somalian. And Harley. Right. You know, I was, I don't, I don't know how, I, the reason why I, I can't say, I can't say Somalia. Somalia. I can't, I just at least said you were it. Hold, at least you are holding your wine glass like huh? a grown man. I was holding it like, I, I was, you know. Serving. Friends with you freaking. You can't take this kid anywhere. This kid has you no man. You keep trying. You keep trying. My elbows are off the table as we speak. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, but yeah, shout out to Chef Alex. I don't know how to segue. Speaking of getting wine bottles, Usain Bolt. <laughs> no, uh, I want to bring this in. We got uh, somebody wrote us in a question. Uh, Daryl from Chicago. Now, for those of you who don't know, Usain Bolt broke the NFL 40 yard dash record. He had a 422 in sneakers, by the way. Respect, Zane. Big up, Jamaica. <laughs> Jamaica. Let me tell you a truth. <laughs> Dude, not, not for nothing. He just dropped everything and said, let, let me run this after I, you know, at, uh, retired. And broke the NFL record at a 4-2-2. Right. Um, he did it on a win. Didn't you say he had a backpack on him or something? He put everything down, but yeah. He really backpack? Like, I, I got this. Yeah. He did it in sneakers. A fanny yeah. pack. So break, breaking news, Belichick has signed him. Yeah. <laughs> well, all right. Well, here's the question from Daryl. 
Daryl from Chicago asked us, do you think in his prime and if properly trained, Usain Bolt could run a sub four 40 yard dash? Which I think is a legit question. That would put him at a 399 40 yard dash, which is, I mean, it's out of control. It's absurd. Is this even worth even? Uh, I don't think he could. I think it's impossible to run a sub. I think he, I think he's a high gear guy. So I, I, mean, I think he's probably running the most, the fastest at the end. Yeah, so he usually turns on. Yeah, I, I, I think it would be difficult on the early stages. Yeah, because he's got the you know the super long legs. I think he's a high gear guy. He's not a he's not a quarter horse. Well, as two guys who ran track, yeah. height does affect you coming yeah. out of the blocks. Yeah, and he, and Usain Bolt's never been. He always turns on mm -hmm. um, in in those hundreds and the two hundreds. He always turn. He do, he doesn't come out of the blocks ahead of everyone. He he. He starts low, and then there's a there's a point where, and if you've ever watched him in any uh, uh, world championships or obviously the Olympics, you can see where he turns it on, and then you see the rest of the, you see uh, what's his name Tyson Gay, you see like <laughs> damn it. <You> know? <laughs> I mean, but but then again, uh, nobody would have ever thought a guy that tall could ever run a what was it a ten six what, what did he run a ten six five. Got me. Uh, to, uh, fast. <laughs> it was fast. You got the it under. was fast. The yes. point is, though, yeah. um, I agree with you. I do think if he trained, he would definitely have the world record. Because Christian Coleman ran it at a 4.1. I think he ran a 4.17. But that was with, uh, with uh, spikes on, which you're not allowed to do, by the way. Right. You can't run. You know that. You can't run the 40 in spikes. Dig right? It. Dig it. You're on the grass, and you can't come out of the blocks. You have to cut, start standing, right, right. which again is an advantage to the sprinter because you're going on your go, not on a gun. Right. But I, I, I can't see him running a sub yeah, So if both lined up in the 40. slot, you got one corner in the history of the NFL to cover him, who are you going with? Uh, I got to go uh, Dion. I got to go Dion. Uh, well, here's the difference. Dion had problems with bigger receivers like right. Michael. Well, Michael Irvin out physical to him. And uh, what was the other guy for Detroit? Herman Moore. I would go with Daryl Green, man. I think Daryl Green. Were you gonna say Daryl Green? Yeah, I was trying to figure out. So fast. Yeah, because Daryl, Daryl, Daryl ran like a four two eight forty at like forty years yeah. old. Can, can you imagine the collision at full speed, uh, Atwater and Usain Bolt? Oof. Oh. Come over the middle. Prime, maybe Revis. Uh. I, I, I know it's a Jet thing. I'm not being Jet friendly. I just think in his prime, Revis can figure out a way to stay with him. Wow. Uh, possibly. Yeah. Uh, I will say this though: Christian Coleman and him ran. Uh, a rate that they ran because uh, I think it was a 50 they may have ran it and and they were neck and neck mm. but that was at the end of Usain Bolt's career right before he retired it was 2017. Right. When's the last time you guys ran a 40? <laughs> <laughs> I remember way back. <laughs> What's your best 40 time? What was your 100 time? Nah my 100 I was terrible I was I was a jumper I was really? long high and triple jump I was terrible uh Anytime people saw like me, they were like, oh, we got a brother. I was like, don't get it twisted. <laughs> <laughs> Not going to go the way you want it to. Yeah. My best time unofficially, my 100 was a 10.58. I ran, I ran about a 10.6. That's terrible. That's not bad. It's not terrible. 40 yard yeah. dash. I'd be hard pressed. No, not a 40. 100, 100 meters. Yeah, I know. I'm the ass about 40 yard dash. 40 yard dash unofficially, 468 at 220 what? pounds. 25 year old Brett? C consistently a 471. I was 220, though. All right. Jay, what was yours? <laughs> I, I, I'm struggling to, to find a moment that I ever ran 100 yards, <laughs> much less a timed 100 yards. Alex, what was your 40 time? I think it was like a 4.9. Get out of here. 4.9? This has a headband on, and it shaves 0.3. For what, what do you think my eyebrows? You don't think these things weigh me down? <laughs> Now I'm disappointed because I was cut. We, he, when he came to my uh, to help me move that one time, right. we were throwing the ball around, yeah. and I was covering him at my age, and I thought I did something good. I didn't know you were that slow. <laughs> no, you did. You did I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm covering this twenty something. Should we go back to that list from earlier? With yeah. The <laughs> <laughs> there's so a, there's a reason there's so few. <laughs> so I, I'm going to go on record as saying no, he could not run a sub far, uh, subpar forty. But he would definitely have the record at a. I would say he runs a 4-1-1. Easy. Alex, we have a special guest today. Uh, so let's talk about uh, our uh, NBA trade deadline and uh, introduce our special guest, would you? Yes, in honor of NBA trade deadline week, we flew him in on a red eye special guest, the one and only Stephen A. Smith. This is Stephen A. Smith, here in Las Vegas. My list and all. 
<laughs> my hair is filled in. My forehead is not as pronounced. As we've met the trade deadlines, do we know whether or not AD is going to be a Laker? No, we do not. But we do know <laughs> that poor Zingas has left New York for greener pastures in Texas. <laughs> That's Texas with a TH. Texas with a Mark Cuban. Poor Zingas is gone, but the New York Knicks still continue to hope to strive. Hope to survive, hope to survive in this new, I'm spitting a lot. Yeah, no, I gotta, I'm sorry. Cover your drink, I am sorry. <laughs> I'm very essy. How long am I gonna do this? Oh, wait, cut wait, wait for a breath there, Steven. <laughs> Steven, I gotta ask you, I know, I know you're a huge <laughs> New York Knicks guy. The Knicks are in trouble. <laughs> Yet again, there couldn't be no bad trade deal because it can't get any worse. Then it already is. <laughs> so in a New York Knicks utopia, Stephen, what would you like to happen this offseason and this lottery? I would like the 94 Knicks to come back. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I want. <laughs> Get Patrick Ewing, Mason, Starks, <laughs> Starks. Barry Johnson. I need, I need men to be men. No, um, you know what? I, as, as, a, as a New Yorker, man, I just, I, I we, were, we were talking off the air. I said, there's no bad move because they're just in, it's it's such a bad situation. It's been a bad situation, and every year you think, well, you know, when Porzingis uh, came to New York, I remember uh, being in Brooklyn and Spike Lee had this uh, this this MJ tribute day. Porzingis came, New Yorkers were behind it, and then it, it fizzled. Yeah, and that's how, how, in your opinion, how did the Knicks get here? Like, John, you could chime in too. You're a Knicks fan, correct? How did it get this bad? John? There's like that, you know, you know, I, that green slime running through the bottom of the sewer in New York City. That's enough City. out of you. And I, think, I, think, <laughs> I think that's part of the problem. But I mean, is New York a happier place when the Knicks are good? Yes. Yeah. But that hasn't yes. been in forever. I'm right. just wondering how it fell. When I lived in New York, last time I was living there was in 1996 mm -hmm. and, or 95, and the Knicks were the Knicks. And it was, yeah. you know, Obviously, with, been a lot of with, time. With, any, with any team, I think, even when the team starts to fizzle, you still get like, with, like say the Knicks after after sort of the sort of the the mid '90s heyday of the Knicks. New York is still a holding new, the New York Knicks uh, organization down because we were like, all right, it's gonna we're, we're gonna have a couple of bad years, but we're gonna rebuild. But we keep rebuilding, and there's no consistency. I, I honestly think it's more uh, poor management. Yeah, Stoudemire didn't work out. Mello didn't work out. Yeah. And it just it, it just continued. You, every great NBA franchise has a has a franchise player, and right. they, they have not had that right. since you. They just right. haven't had. Right. It. They've right. tried a couple right. times with a couple different guys, and it just not has. It just doesn't work. Yeah. It's like having a, an elite quarterback in the NFL. You, you right. might be you might win some games, but you're right. Not go to the but Bronx it's line. it's the New York Knicks. It's it's New York is basketball. Right. It's the guard. I mean, how did we get here? How did it get this bad? Well, That's here, the here's the interesting moment, though, Brett, because they cleared the Porzingis mm -hmm. the cap and they traded the Hardaway contract. Right. They have, they can sign two marquee guys. I mean, let me just list the 2019 offseason free agent guys. You got Durant, Kawhi, Jimmy Butler, Clay Thompson, Kemba Walker, Cousins, Tobias Harris, Middleton. Not to mention if they win the lottery, this could be your time, dude. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It, you, mi whoa, whoa. you miss Zion. <clears throat> well, I well he's a lottery, lottery, the lottery, the lottery, lottery. Yeah. lottery. Yeah. Right, and they have two first rounds. Right, two first round picks. So anything is possible. I'm, a, <laughs> I, I, ho I hope that it does work out. But now, now I think we're we're sort of uh, disillusioned. We we you root for them. I mean, I I've been you know, and this is this is almost uh, sacrilege. As a New Yorker, LA is my number one. I'm, I've always been a, 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 a Lakers fan first. But if you grew up in the '80s, I mean, you did have an affinity for either, you know, the Lakers. It was showtime. And, and, it, was, it was a showtime. And, and, and the Celtics yeah. as well. I mean, yeah. the Knicks almost seems like their fan base is like, you know, fool me once, you know, shame on you. But fool me twice, shame on me. Right. I mean, they're getting to that point, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Camelo, you know, was supposed to be the, the hope. The hope. I'm right. saying it's hard to rebuild in New York just because of the market. Because it's New York. It's New York. Yeah. yeah. Now, yeah. If, if out of all the unrestricted free agents, is there one that you would wish that the, the Knicks would get? KD. I was I was just gonna say, which which sort of segues into what we were talking about earlier because yeah. if KD, you know KD's he he's won two rings right, so now 
you if 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 you tr if you transferred if you if you went to Golden State if you left your team you if you left OKC you know which you did and to go play with the enemy go sleep with the enemy now you have your rings come to New York and prove yourself That's prove that prove that you're a leader I would say that KD for his legacy I think going to the Knicks would be a smart move yeah. uh, just if he's playing for him right like you said he's right. already got his rings. But what's in question, whether it's true or not, it's it's not my opinion. More debatable. It's it, but it has been thrown around in in sports circles. Well, we were talking about but it. But I'm right? saying to leave OKC when you were three, you had them three and one. You're up three one. You're three up three and one, one against three Golden. One. You know what I mean? I, it, it drives me nuts. I, I, but I want to bring it back because you guys lived through and I didn't the mm -hmm. '80s basketball right. era where there was team loyalty, where no right. one would ever dare to go against. A rival or join them, right? Right. The boy, what you were saying, Boston, Boston. As as much as Jordan lost to Boston, he was never going to go and say, you know, let me play with Larry now. No, he wouldn't do it. Right. Uh, yeah. They, they, it was a different type. It was a different time. Obviously, a different era, different breed. Uh, not saying these kids don't don't want to win just as bad, but I, I just I don't I couldn't see. It would be like if all of a sudden like. Well, I guess it's a bad analogy, but Darth Vader just started hanging out with. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so you're like him and Obi Wan start going yeah, to like, a creature cantina. Yeah, like, 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 like the Joker and Batman are now driving around together. Right, right. Just, you know, right. just certain things don't look good. Right, like, it wouldn't right, look good right. if Magic and Bird were on the same team. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So is, is it just is it not teed up for a an alpha a Kobe Jordan real lion mm -hmm. mindset mm -hmm. in today's basketball culture to go there? and be the guy. Whoever chooses to do it, and Carmelo tried, but let's be honest, he's a, ta he's a taker, he doesn't, never really figured out how to be on a team. Mm -hmm. You got Durant, he goes there, he can recruit a Clay or an Irving or a Jimmy B, they get a lottery pick, all of a sudden they're back in the business. How do you not want to go do that? Well, but that also uh, brings up a good point. Maybe KD doesn't want to be a le the leader. You know what I mean? May maybe he actually prefers. Then why are we watching basketball? You mean that he, no, but but he, he but prefers that's... being Robin. Right, right. Ah. That's... Maybe that's why he went to go. No, State, but that's what right? I'm saying. Maybe, in. maybe you know, and, and because we come from an era where. And I think all all athletes, you know, when you're a kid dreaming about playing and hitting the final, the game-winning shot, you want to do that. But some people may not want the pressure of, like LeBron, he's like, you know what, wherever I go, I'm going to be the leader of my team. KD may not be that guy. I, I, think, I think KD is that guy on the yeah, court. I, do. I don't. I, I, he might not be that guy in the, in the locker room. That's what I'm saying. Right. Not just on the court, but right. just on because... On the court, he's that guy. Right. But, you know, I think, you know, if you get KD there... And you do like and you were somehow to get Zion there, mm -hmm. um, you know. I don't even think the Knicks could screw that up. You go find yourself a nice point guard, and away you go. Well, let me what ask you guys Anthony this. Davis, where does he go? Wait, I'll, I'll yeah. No, I was just gonna say. Okay, you guys, they're bringing in just like for the KD pitch two years ago, mm -hmm. three years ago. Mm -hmm. They're bringing in New York's finest. They're bringing you Godfrey, Spike Lee, everybody from New York in mm -hmm. to pitch Kevin Durant on coming to the Knicks. <laughs> right. What is going on in that room? What do you say to Kevin Durant? Right. Oh. What's your What's your recruitment pitch to Kevin Durant to join the Knicks? Mm -hmm. I would say this. I'd say, Hey, Kevin, do you want to live in an 1,100 square foot apartment for 20 million dollars <laughs> <laughs> and, and, par and parallel park as the piles of crap at 6 a.m. in negative 26 degree weather? Sign me up. Sign I love me up. Sign me up. And not have to own a car, and if you do, got to pay a million dollars for a parking space, right, which right. one went for? Right. I don't know. I don't know how you pitch. Yeah, it. I, honestly, I don't know what the what the pitch is. Other than you sell New York, at, you sell someone but if, on New York. The same way you sell people on, like L.A. People go to L.A. not just to play for the Lakers, but because it's Hollywood. Right. But well, I'll tell you what, though. Like you're back to your point, right? The Knicks are New York. If right. you make it, if if you are the team there, right. if they do pull this together, you walk every street in New York, and they're gonna know you. Yeah. They do that in L.A. 40% of the people may may not even know who the hell they are. Right. And, and you're the, the man in New York. And the other 60% the ain't next. car, so they're not going to see you anyway. <laughs> yeah. But but in New York, that's that's the thing. If you're in New York, New, well, going back to my original point, New York New Yorkers hold down New York teams. You know what I mean? And so well, I was going to say we have Brooklyn now. There's yeah. the Brooklyn Nets, right. which right. you know used to be Jersey's team. 
Right. But could they literally become New York's team now? I they. Mean, uh, we're just we're begging uh, for a villain no. right now. It's, we're begging. No, it's not gonna happen. Because there's it's, it's still the Barclays Center form. versus the Garden. It's the the Garden is the Garden. You know what I mean? Yeah, you but, sell history. You sell history. Yeah. You sell MSG. You, there you sell go. Bernard King. You yeah, sell but Bernard you know King. what though? These young, they, people don't even know who that is anymore. These young kids don't know who that is. Yeah. We they, don't read. They're they're, right now. they're giving out organic coffee down at the at, <laughs> at, at, at the Barclay. <laughs> He's, they do because I've had it. You know? <laughs> I'm a young guy, and I want I want that '80s '90s rivalry, team rivalry, right, right. to come back. Can you imagine an association with LeBron on the Lakers and Durant on the Knicks? Mm -hmm. This is what we need. We this, need someone to go to New York and be the villain. Well, it's, it's what we need, but I don't. Who's who's willing to? I'm how, reading how, the list. How, how do you know LeBron's not the villain? Yeah. I was just gonna say that. What yeah. makes what makes the, the, the Lakers franchise the, the good guys? I think because uh -huh. you're a Lakers fan. Yeah. No, 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 no. LeBron's not a villain right now. LeBron decided to move. His LeBron is getting his whole team traded. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's talk about. Yo, dude. <laughs> let's talk about that. Was, that was oh, that was painful. So the AD, so the AD talks with the Lakers. Yeah. Obviously, it didn't happen. Yeah. There was as much as five guys for one plus right. draft picks. Right. Pelicans asked for everything and yeah. then some. Didn't happen. But if you're AD or you're the Lakers, what are your thoughts on what didn't shake out, and then how do you plan it moving forward? You, you move forward. You know, right. Le, 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 but, go ahead, I'm sorry. Well, I was just saying, this offseason, when you now have the Celtics in play and a couple other teams making a bid for AD, what do you do if you're Magic? I got nothing. I, I honestly don't think uh, Magic is, uh, you know, this is, this is, I don't know if Magic is the best answer to, uh, to the Lakers' woes. That's just in my in my opinion. Mm -hmm. you, you what do you got in your mind, Brad? You got something. Right? <laughs> I, I agree. I mean, look at the trade today with the Clips. Yeah. I, the I, logo yeah. is on in the other locker room, Jerry West, and he is hustling yeah. right now. Yeah. I'm just not, I'm not. dish Tobias Harris for some picks. Yeah. Got Muscala, dish Muscala for See, but, Zubach. But and I love Magic, but I just, I was, I was, I was like. But uh, that's an easy trade because you, all you, the kids, don't, they're just saying, look, your kids don't have to change schools. <laughs> you know what I mean? You don't have to relocate. Right, right. <laughs> you're still here. It's the same bus route. Yeah, you, you get the, you're in the same, in the same uh, Staples Center, so everything's right. good. It's just right. like, you yeah. know. Just right. hooking friends and family up for twenty. It's almost like the other team didn't have. You remember you'd be on the court and hey, right. we need two more. Right. And you, have to, you have to go play for them. Right. You just turn your shirt <laughs> inside turn your shirt out. Inside out and go. If you're Anthony Davis, do you consider going to the Knicks? I think you got to. Yeah. I mean, because why not? I mean, he he looks to be the guy that wants to be the guy, right? And he yeah. wants to be the franchise. And that that's the, that's where you go. If you go to LeBron. You're just you're succumbing to saying, right. all right, I want to get a ring somehow, maybe. But you're playing but, number but, two. Right. You're yeah. robbing. He's he, he. If you want to build something from the ground up, it's it's got to go there. And I can't I can't believe that he didn't get moved. I mean, right. Because yeah. he's right. they got nothing now. Right. Can you even name a Jordan, Kobe, Kevin Garnett mindset in today's modern day basketball? If you were to pick one guy, I think who's the closest to? Them? I think LeBron has it. I, I think I like LeBron, man. I really do. And I don't. I don't. I, I actually look at LeBron. For, LeBron is not. LeBron's a previous era. You know, he's a, he's 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 an elder statesman now. He, right, yeah, he's a, he's a transition well, he's, guy. He's a win at all costs kind of guy. Yeah, I mean, that's what uh, all is important to him really is. Right, winning. right, right, and. Yeah. There's a lot of guys I think that that's not necessarily that they're they're happy just to be in the league. Right, right. No, look, LeBron I, I think has cemented himself. I, I think he you know, obviously he's a competitor. I mean Yeah. Yeah. So it's just it's an understatement. Um uh but yeah, I would still say LeBron, man. I mean, um, he's the second greatest player in NBA history. I, I, you don't, you don't think Steph Curry? I just caught what you said. <laughs> I think Steph Curry has has that giant. And I'm not, I'm not, I, I am kid, not a I fan. I want, this is what I want, Dean. I yeah, want I'm, someone to. Yeah. Brett, you were talking about it. Please, and, and elaborate on it. Who even goes in the paint anymore? I want right. someone clotheslining right. somebody. Right. If I'm not watching WWE anymore, I need right. something going on right. in the paint right. on Tuesday nights on TNT. Well, get back to Steph Curry. Uh, with nothing Durant. happens in the paint, right? Well, yeah, nothing. I mean, nothing happens in the. Paint. I know. He wouldn't That's, listen right. in the '80s or '90s. We all know he wouldn't just be out there shooting threes. Right. right. You know, he's he's, he's got, got you got post up, <laughs> <laughs> dealing dealing with Lambier. Yeah, uh, Lambier uh, and, and Rick, Rick Mahorn and yeah, yeah. Rambis. Yeah. But um, yeah. you know, it, it's 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 a different game now, man. I yeah. mean, you know, it's apples and oranges. Look, I. I Sports fans are really, you know, voicing 
their disdain for a lot of the sports games with their viewership and, and the interest in, in the games anymore. Yeah. Um, well, it's getting softer. It's just it's not too, too soft. Yeah, it's like it's like watching boxing and now they can't hit in the head. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Right. It's like, all right, guys, it's only body shots, and, right. and you know. Right. Um, tell somebody until somebody culture? breaks a rib. Is this a part of the current culture? Yes. Is, is I, yeah. I, th I think I think it is a part of the current culture because. I think culture as a whole in Britain, and I were talking earlier, is, has, has softened. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, you know, even in, in our world of comedy, uh, you know, we came up around guys, whether it was Billy Burr, Patrice, whomever, that if you're sitting at a table with them and they say something, they shut you down, they snap on you, Jones, whatever, roast you. If you, if you walk away crying, you shouldn't be around it. Yeah. Mm. You know, but if but if you if you if you want to sit at the table with the big dogs, you have to play you have to play ball and you and it's going to get dirty. And also too, the way masculinity was defined, especially in sports, right. were by generations that were World War II veterans, right. so people that marched civil in rights. civil rights, yeah. uh, you know, people that missed a lot of meals. Right. It was it was a different breed of toughness, right. mental toughness, and a lot of. Um, honor and code that, you know, that's why those older dudes, like my grandfather would, you know, these were those, guys that cleaned tools guys. with gasoline and smoked cigars at the same time. <laughs> right. It would be unheard of to, to side with the guy that keeps beating you, you know? Right. But th right. these, the kids, the, it's a different time period right. now. They feel like they have an entitlement to win and whatever that, right. whatever has to happen for them to, to get that, that's what they're gonna do. Right. You're not gonna, you're not gonna, stand sh shoulder to shoulder with the guy and keep going into battle like some of the guys did back in the day and lose, come up just short. Mm -hmm. Those guys would rather do that mm -hmm. than go to another team and win. Right, right. 100%. And you even instill that into today's modern You know NBA. what, dude? And you know me, man. I even say it in my act. I, I do like millennials. I, I think a lot of you guys get a bad rap. They, I think these guys, are, th these kids, are good. they can be great. Mm -hmm. Um, I think a lot of the rules have been altering this. You know what I mean? I, look, Steph Curry is still so shooting people's eyes out in the 80s. Shit. I mean, he's just going to... Right, right. But it, it, even with LeBron, I mean, if LeBron was able to play... Like, if, if LeBron could play defense today like they played back then, yeah. he would dominate the NBA. Right. It's just, it's just a different game now, yeah. um, unfortunately. But I wanted to ask you a question. With Durant, Thompson, and Cousins leaving Golden State, what, what happens to, to, to the franchise? They falter. <laughs> I, I, I said with Durant, Thompson, and, and Cousins leaving Golden State, what, what happens to, to, to the franchise? I think they rebuild around Curry again. They, uh, they have that franchise player we talked about that the true. Knicks have never had in right. the last 25 years. Right. And somebody like a Steph Curry, similar to Jordan or whomever, or LeBron, makes the rest of the team better. You know what else we're seeing too, like e even with the coaching in the Super Bowl, is the influence. Like Curry played against an all his father. You know what I mean? Like right. e even with Peyton Manning. I mean, look who his father was. You're, mm -hmm. you're seeing a lot of that now. Uh, what's his name? Um, the running back for uh, for the Panthers. McCaffrey. McCaffrey. Like his his dad. You know, you're seeing a lot of that lineage going on mm -hmm. now, which I don't remember seeing. Holyfield's kids running back for Georgia. Yeah, I know. Dude. But Holyfield, well, I think, could have played middle linebacker anywhere. Those big dudes. Um, but but again, uh, Curry, you know, they're, they're just are they just going to rebuild around him? Which which you said. Yeah. Well, let me ask you this: if you're if you have to decide to keep Durant or Clay Thompson, I think, and I, you're Bob Myers, who do you who do you I think decide? I go with Clay Thompson. I agree with that. Yeah. I think and let Durant Thompson. walk. Yeah. Because Clay Thompson was there before before, and they they had cohesion. Right. Prior to uh, Durant coming, it's a good point. You know, uh, you know. Again, I, 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 KD. I don't know what he's gonna play for now. He's got his rings, like you yeah. said. He's gotta What's, go to the Knicks. Uh, if he goes to the Knicks, I think that's. If he goes small. to LA. I'm not watching basketball or playing 2K. No. Done. Oh, Why? As, I, as a Lakers it's fan, it's a cheat code. the Lakers win, and he's like, hey, you know. No, <laughs> I don't even want that. I will be a Clippers fan I, next. I'll year. be honest with you. I felt Seriously. I felt that way when LeBron went to the Heat. Because I, I, I felt that was Dwayne Wade's team, and Dwayne Wade won a championship without mm -hmm. LeBron. Mm -hmm. And that's he grew on me. You know, Bosh yeah. and LeBron grew on yeah. me. Yeah. That's where I became a – well, I became a LeBron fan in his documentary more than a game. If, you, yeah. if you've never seen that documentary, you have a whole new respect for LeBron yeah. in, in the documentary. Um, but uh, I, I think it's just would, – would, would you say would he be the one that started the trend of leaving? Fortunately, Durant doesn't do that. 
if LeBron doesn't. Right. But LeBron didn't do it in the same I, way. I, yeah, I don't think they did it in the same fashion. I think, I, I think LeBron gave Cleveland uh, a number of years. Um, he at least was there, uh, and they got close. They got yeah. close a, a, a number of times before he finally said, Hey, man, it's cold in Ohio. I don't want to go to Miami, you know. <laughs> I'm 25. <laughs> and it is young. cold in Ohio. It was it's negative young. 26 degrees. Yeah, dude. So Windchill I, factor. Okay, so that's pro. Next week, we're going to start talking about NCAA, March Madness, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, let's take us out here. It's, it's, it's with the NFL season officially over, I really hope you guys rode, rode with me all season. And if you did, I apologize for my pick at the end of the year. <laughs> I really thought the Rams were going to pull it out. Uh, I was right about the under. And... Uh, Alex was right about the whole Super Bowl. Thank you. This kid is in his glory today. Thank so you. I'll, kudos. I'll do the Nancy Pelosi clap. <laughs> <laughs> the so condescension. Alex, yeah. Thank you. Good Thank for you, you, Alex. Good for you. <laughs> this is your episode, man. Between Edelman, you making all the right picks. A Jew wins the MVP. <laughs> I finally hit the hook. Thank you, Jay. Mm -hmm. Pats minus two and a half. But yes, yes. I went to Atlanta representing the D Gentleman show. Schmoozed a little bit, worked my way around the room, got a little tip from Holyfield about how to cook a steak, a little gentleman tip from Christine Leahy of what the, she looks for in men. Either way, this has been another episode. And he met Gary V. <laughs> and I met Gary V. <laughs> the one and only Gary V. But yes, it, it was a great time downtown Atlanta, and uh, let's take a look at it. Well, we're, we're going to watch it over the credits. This kid, you know what? Now, now you failed to take out. Woof. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I need another shot of comedy. You better keep that in. You need to keep that. that. I'm sorry. I'm beep sorry. Just beep it out. Beep just beep it. that out. This has been another episode of the D Gentleman Show. I'm Schwitzy. Go ahead. Go ahead. Do it. You do. So this has been another episode of the D Gentleman Show. I want to thank my man Dean Edwards for coming in my today. Man. Thank you, dude. Anytime. Catch him if you're in Vegas. He's he's at the uh, Comedy Cellar at the Rio. Yeah. Make sure you catch him. Also, uh, what's your social media? I am Dean Edwards. Follow uh, to all my I am Dean Edwards because that's who I am. And speaking of social media, make sure you subscribe on all our social media at thedgshow.com. The D as in degenerate, G as in gentleman show.com. And one more thanks uh, to, to Jay Rue for coming in. And, and a big special shout out to Alex Money Monaco, who finally earned. Money wow. Monaco. He finally <laughs> earned his nickname. Be a nice Valentine's Day, Brett. Maybe eat now. Know how to cook a steak now, too. Hey, thanks, Belichick. Anyways, make sure you call your moms. God bless. Is it confidence more so than what you're wearing? Yes. Confidence. Yes. But, like, also look cool. <laughs> you got any tip or two? A little go-to walk a meal that's just a beautiful staple. My go-to meal? It's sad that I'm going to say this. Be real? Please. Peanut butter and jelly sandwich, bro. PB and J! <laughs> I like to smell good, man. Ooh. You like the little, how about the, uh, the comedians called the, the spray and swirl? Sebastian, he did it on comedians and cars. He sprayed. He swirled. Is that how you spray the cologne? That's how I do it. Let's go, baby. <laughs> Give me a little fashion tip for, for the show. Well, when you're, <laughs> when, Swiss, you're when you're at a place where you are in a place where you have your own signature sneaker with K-Swiss, look at this. You get to humble brag on shows like this. So I wear my own shit. <laughs> Jordan. Gary V, baby. What is own kicks? I'm not in the six foot yeah. club, and I'm 160 pounds soaking wet. You look like. <laughs> I'll, make, I'll make up for it with the hair, baby. Yeah, yeah.